dear friends welcome to this uh, electrical engineering knowledge sharing channel amp power system we are discussing power factor we have already completed two part part 1 and part 2 where we have discussed about the power factor basics then how the power factor is correlated with the active power reactive power what is power factor triangle then we have discussed how much kvr is to be injected how what is the equation for that in respect to the power factor and the new power factor we have also we have also in preliminary discussed about this uh, method of improving of power factor and we have discussed this method is there are three different methods available those three method we will discuss today in more details so first step we said that is by a static capacitor bank second step is your this is a the static capacitor bank we can use when this var requirement var requirement if the var requirement is less than 500 kvr if this is the requirement then we can use this uh, static capacitor bank if the var requirement is more than 500 kvr then static capacitor bank may not be the right solution or the not the right judgment in that case we go by synchronous motor running on leading power factor synchronous motor running on leading power factor is leading on leading power factor when is when a synchronous motor running on leading power factor we call it synchronous condenser so we have to go for synchronous condenser that is the second method third method this will be applicable when the requirement is more than 500 kvr and number third is here is called phase advancer this is generally used when only single induction motor with a silvering arrangement is to be if power factor to be improved of a motor of induction motor with a silvering configuration only that type of motor we can use phase advancer but it is a very old techniques so nowadays we do not use this phase advancer too much because requirement can be made by either to this so these are the three different method by which we can improve the power factor of a power system that is either consumer end or other where the loads are connected now we'll discuss one by one first now for the first method for the capacitor bank if we want to connect the capacitor bank we have we have to calculate how much capacitance to be included in the load end or the, the consumer end to improve improve the power factor from theta 1 or the cos theta 1 to cos theta 2 so we have already calculated that required kvr or required kvr that is called delta kvr or this equal to we can say delta q that equal to we have seen how much that equal to kilowatt into tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 tan theta 1 to what is tan theta 1 theta 2 we have already calculated if this is the this is the uh, v kva then we have seen this is a kilowatt and this is the kvr and this angle is theta 1 this is the initial now if we want to reduce this kvr suppose this amount of kvr we want to reduce that equal to delta q then the new power factor will be how the new angle new angle will be this theta 2 and this will be the new kvr so this amount of positive kvr we have to inject on the system that this is a delta q that equal to how much kilowatt into this kilowatt is remain same kilowatt into tan theta 2 minus tan theta 1 so this we have to calculate from this equation we can calculate what is the value of the capacitance now how the capacitance will be connected capacitor will be connected this capacitor bank will be connected in parallel to the main consumer load that means suppose i am drawing on single phase suppose this is a resistance and this is a reactance or inductance this is a current is going from the line is i i suppose i so this current is going due to this the power factor is power factor or phase angle is theta 1 and power factor is cos theta 1 now i want to in reduce the power factor or increase the power factor cos theta 1 to cos theta 2 then what we will do i will connect a capacitor in parallel to the load that means this is my load this is load which is the same load as before and which is taking current i and now we connected a capacitor in parallel so now the current which is coming from the line that will be deeper and suppose i dash and this capacitor bank it will give a current ic so this i dash plus ic that equal to the total current as before okay so this is the equation for the uh, 
current equation and this is the uh, picture how the capacitor to be connected. Now we have to calculate what is this capacitor's value or if the capacitor value is C then what is the how C is related. Now this IC equal to how much we know this IC from that equation which we draw we know this KVR delta KVR delta KVR is equal to root 3 for 3 phase into voltage into current I sin theta that is the I that is equal to IC this I sin theta we say IC this is equal to IC so this is equal to delta Q or this is equal to you can say delta KVR okay delta Q now from here you see how we can calculate this capacitor's value I am deleting this part so delta Q or delta KVR delta Q that equals to how much root 3 into V into IC this I sin theta on IC now IC equals to if we this is if this is the circuit where the voltage is connected V and the capacitor is C current is IC then what is the equation for IC that is equal to root 3 into V for single phase how much will be IC equal to V by XC this is the voltage and this is by capacitive reactors now XC equals to how much that is equal to our we can write down root 3 into V square by Xc means how much? 1 by omega c, right? Omega is the angular frequency and c is the capacitance value in farad. So this equal to how much? Root 3 into V square into omega c. We can write down in this way. Now from here we can calculate c equal to delta q by root 3 into V square into omega. This is equal to delta q by root 3 into V square into omega means 2 pi f, f is the frequency. So from this equation delta k we know delta k equal to how much? Delta k equal to kilowatt, we know kilowatt into tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 divided by root 3 into V square into 2 pi f. Now all this equation we know, we know the from theta 1 to theta 2 we go, kilowatt we know, V voltage we know and power frequency we know. From this equation we can calculate the capacitance how much capacitor capacitor to be connected to this system to improve from power factor from theta 1 to theta 2 so from this equation we are getting capacitance value c is now known from c equals to our how much kilowatt into tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 divided by root 3 for 3 phase into v square into 2 pi f this is the value of the capacitance we have to add to the line okay now this capacitor for three phase system we generally connect this capacitor in delta form okay we form a capacitor three arm delta form we connect in this way this is connected to the three phase line suppose this is red yellow blue this is the way this capacitor we have to divide this total capacitance is three phase capacitor now we have to divide in per phase so if this is a three phase line going to the load this is a consumers is connected over here here we will connect this capacitor in delta form this is one capacitor this is one capacitor this will be connected over here this is a simple way i am showing the connection of this capacitor with the three phase capacitor now this is the way we can calculate the capacitor now this capacitor connection i have shown the simple connection but actual connection is not like this now this capacitance whether it will be a fixed capacitor bank or it will be a variable capacitor bank that depend on the configuration of the load or the characteristics of the consumer or characteristics of the load if the system like this suppose the load is fixed there is no change in the load in the plant plant load is always fixed so they have a fixed power factor suppose that power factor is poor maybe 0.7 but that power factor even fixed, it is not getting changes. Now we want to increase the power factor 0 0.7 to 0 0.9. So this 0 0.7 means cos theta 1 is 0 0.7. We increase to cos theta 2 0 0.9. So we can calculate the C. Now in that case, if the if the load is fixed, if the load power factor or the load, because we last time we said power factor of a load, it could be it is fixed if the equipment running on full load. But if the equipment load is varying over a time, suppose the equipment is 100 ampere equipment motor, but it is sometimes it is running on 50 ampere, sometimes 60 ampere, sometimes 40 ampere, sometimes 70 ampere. So this with the ampere, automatically power factor also getting changed. Power factor is not constant. 
as you as you increase the load power factor will be better and better and it can go maximum one so with the varying load varying load power factor will be gradually lower the load power factor will be poor if the load is high power factor will be high so if that type of load is there then we cannot use a fixed capacitor bank but if the load is fixed suppose load is always 100 ampere but the power factor is only 0.7 load is not getting varied maybe plus minus 5 percent variation in that case we can use a fixed capacitor bank so how we connect the fixed capacitor bank same way this is our load and it is a fixed load load is not getting very very varied over the time and here we have a three phase connection that is suppose red yellow and blue now what we will do in parallel to this in parallel to this we will use a either we can use isolation switch okay and then we can use a fuse for protection of the capacitor bank then we can connect a delta connected capacitor bank three capacitor connected in delta we can connect this simple way okay so the, the and it will remain constant in the, it is a fuse for the and we can use the overload relay over here okay if we want we can use the overload relay in addition to the fuse this will protect the short circuit protection this will give the overload protection but we have to keep in mind this capacitor bank during switching it takes a high source current so this fuse to be coordinated in that way this is a simple way to connect a capacitor bank but now with the invent with the, our uh, mccb we can remove this isolator and the fuse and we can put a mccb with a short circuit overload and short circuit protection if i put a mccb motor mccb with a short circuit and overload protection in that case i don't need the fuse and overload relay the mccb it has a short circuit protection as well as overload protection it has a 49 protection as well as 50 protection we have so we can use this thing in a simple way and it will be it is a fixed connection we cannot change it but if the load is variable uh, otherwise another way we can do if we want a remote operation of this capacitor bank then with this breaker in that case this will be put in addition to this we can put a 49 contactor here and this contactor will be energized from the remote through the push button okay so in that case it will remain permanently closed and this contactor will be operated remotely if we need a remote operation in that case we have to use this contactor block to operate this this way also we can use the fixed capacitor bank but if the load is not fixed load is variable in that case we cannot use this fixed capacitor bank so depending on the power factor suppose power factor running uh, if the load is variable then what will happen suppose the load is variable load so it is over the time every day load is variable the morning there is one type of load one amount of load the noon time load is different evening time load is different night time load is different if that is the variable then fixed capacitor bank if we use then sometime power factor will be more than one it will be leading so that will be danger for the plant or sometime it will be very poor so we cannot use this fixed type of capacitor bank in that case we have to use a variable capacitor bank how is that the capacitor bank is split into multiple unit depending on the requirement suppose if we see the my power factor varies from 7 to suppose 0.6 it can vary from 0.6 to 0.8 so in that case what i have to do and i want a power factor 0.9 so when it is running on 0.6 maybe i have to increase 0.9 i have to use a certain kbr we have to use a certain kbr one maybe now when it is running 0.7 we have to increase 0.9 in that case i have to inject kbr kbr 2 different magnitude when it is running 0.8 it could be I have to run on 0.9, then it is a KVR 3. These are the three different magnitude KVR to be injected. That means in that case, there is one type of capacitor C1 value required. Here, maybe it is C2 capacitance required. Here is a C3 capacitance required. If we do multiple stages, it will be more stages required. So in that case, we cannot use a fixed capacitor bank. Then in that case, we have to use a multiple capacitor bank. Suppose there is one capacitor bank C1, one step. Second step, maybe C2. This is another step. Then another step, suppose four step I need for total close control of that. That means four set of capacitor bank we have to use. And this type of capacitor bank, how it will be connected? That means there will be a relay logic to be incorporated. In that case, the capacitor bank will be connected over here. Suppose this is a, I am putting, a, there is a isolator or contactor, whatever is there. Then I have a contactor over here. Suppose this is connected, one capacitor bank is connected over here. Okay this is a c1 capacitor is connected similarly there is a another c2 here c3 here when there is another capacitor bank over here this is another capacitor bank it is connected to the same line this is c3 c4 all are for same configuration now this 
now we have to how this contactor will be connected now we have to sense the capacitor power factor sensing the power factor only suppose in case of when the power factor is 0.6 i need to close all three contactor there is another contactor over here suppose i have a three stage of capacitor so this will be another set so all this set this set this set all three so this contactor to be closed this contactor to be closed this contactor to be closed suppose this is the requirement in that case what i have to do how will contact i have to use a relay suppose in that case i have to use a power factor relay over here this is a power factor relay yeah and this relay for the measuring it will measure the power factor of the system how it will measure it will take the voltage supply from here it may be required sometimes pt if the voltage is high we need a pt and then in one phase current ct is required to sense the current by sensing the current and voltage it can calculate the power factor suppose if then this relay has output contact okay it has a output multiple contact like this okay so the moment the power factor is sent the point point of point 0.6 i know in that case i need all three capacitor to be switched on then immediately this relay will energize and these will give this three contact close so this three contact will close this this auxiliary contact will close the, close this coil all three coil and this all three will be energized then if this relay has a multiple setting suppose there is a suppose this contact i cannot classify so they have to use in that case three another power factor relay to to send the 0.7 power factor this setting will be 0.6 second relay will be setting at 0.7 i know when 0.7 is there then i need to close only two contactor block so in that case this two contactor that relay has a two contact that contact will close this two similarly when it is 0.8 in that case i need only one contactor so there will be another relay which will measure the power factor when they measure power factor 0.8 immediately only one contact block will be closed in this way individual contact multiple contact step by step we can close it but in this case you have to use a multiple relay if we was a relay based logic but now it is with the invention of the solid state this simple and the micro computer this process has become very simple how it has done nowadays nowadays with the same thing this is the power line and there is a multiple suppose this is a, i am drawing in a single a single line way then it will be here this is a the line and the this is your your uh, load terminal is here it is the load is connected over here now here what is done suppose one city i am drawing one from so this is a one contactor block connected over here okay see one contactor connected over here another same way another is connected over here now and then we are measuring a power factor by a micro computer we are using a micro computer where we are giving the voltage supply as well as one phase current supply here we are putting a ct okay so it is giving current and voltage then it calculate the power factor and it is a micro computer so the moment it will send the power factor 0.6 immediately it will give a signal to close all three capacitor band and when it will sense the power factor 0.7 instead of multiple relay i can use only one relay and i can program it when 0.6 power factor it will measure it will give signal it will this micro computer has a multiple contact so it will give contact to close all the three contactors all the three capacitor when it measure 0.7 it will give signal to two capacitor band when it measure 0.8 it will give 0.8 so this way and we will be using contactor over here to close this this way also we can do this thing and it will monitor all the current voltage everything it will monitor in this way multiple contactor we can use okay and in a, nowadays further another development has come up instead of using this contactor contactor we can use a solid state switch like a thyristor to trigger it so in that case what is happening so this is a line where the load is connected over here now here instead of this uh, suppose i am drawing on single phase so on single phase here what we are doing we are putting a thyristor this is a gate and this thyristor is connected in parallel two thyristor is connected in parallel okay this is a gate and it is going to the neutral okay now this get what is this is acting as a contactor instead of contactor we are using this thyristor as a switch now this switch how this thyristor get trigger here same thing we have a micro computer that is cpc central processing controller which has a pt supply voltage supply from the line it is giving line voltage supply from here okay and in one of the phase we have a ct the ct supply over here so it is measuring the uh, power factor and when you send the power factor it has a multiple contact it has a for this if we want a, a, a three phase then i have a six six this type of thyristor is one phase there will be another phase over here 
and then third phase will be here. It is for the one step. Okay. So now what will happen when this will be now the capacitor is connected over here. Okay. This is a this three and the capacitor is connected. Suppose it is a one phase capacitor is connected over here. It will go over here. It is delta connected. Then second phase capacitor is connected. It will go over here delta and the third phase it is going from here to the last phase will be coming from here to here. There will be another capacitor. These are the three capacitors connected in delta. Now this contactor, the equivalent of contactor, how it will be switched on? It is measuring, suppose this is one phase, all the three phase, if I need to connect three capacitor band, then in that case I need a, here this, there are two, two signal required for each, get for triggering switching on, two, two, in, in one block, I need a six signal, six gate signal. So what will happen when it measures six, 0.6 power factor, then there will be another zero crossing card will be there because this thyristor should be triggered only when the voltage is at, it is crossing at zero point. When current is passing or voltage is passing through zero, then only it will, when the current, this current wave, when the current wave will be sensing zero, then only the trigger will take place. So CPC will give a command of the contactor to this. This is your zero crossing card. It will sense the zero crossing and when it is 0.5, 6 power factor, when the zero crossing is there, immediately this will give a signal to all the gates, all the gates over here, all the all the nine gates, so let's say three, six, twelve, so total three, eighteen gates are there. Eighteen gate will take signal, and then immediately it will be switched on. Similarly, when it is point six, it will take twelve signal. When it is a point eight, it will get six signal, and only one bank will be switched on. So in, instead of contactor, we can use this type of th uh, thyristor also to switching on the static capacitor bank. So this is the way we can use a static capacitor in improving the power factor. And second item we use that is your synchronous condenser. We have already said synchronous condenser is actually a synchronous motor which has a armature or the starter winding and the rotor winding. We know the synchronous motor how does it work. Rotor winding gets the DC supply and a starter winding or armature is getting AC supply from the line and then by controlling the excitation we can run the motor as a synchronous motor with a synchronous speed. Now synchronous motor has a characteristic V-shaped characteristics with respect to the excitation. By controlling the excitation to the synchronous motor, we can run the motor either in lagging as an induction motor or we can run the motor as a uh, synchronous motor or the synchronous condenser. So if we see the curve of the synchronous motor, so this curve is actually V curve. It looks like a V-shaped curve at different this, this side is your excitation current, that DC excitation current we are giving and this side is armature or a starter current, which is, called. suppose the motor, this is a three phase, okay, and this is a load, load is over here and this is a load. Now the motor will be connected over here, this is our motor, motor is connected over here and it has a DC field, the DC field is giving by DC excitation, okay, now this is drawing the starter current, this is giving the DC field. This DC field we are controlling, when this DC current is going this way, a starter current for the various load, this is equal to no load condition, there is no load on the motor, motor is running, suppose this is a 0.5 load and this is a full load, your load equal to 1, 100% load and this is equal to 50% load and here is no load, if this is the figure, so from this you can see this is 0 point and this is a current drawn from the system. Now for a particular excitation and this point we call it is zero power factor point. Here is the power factor is unity. Theta equal to zero. This is called PF equal to one here. Why it is one? You see here, when the acceleration current increases, what is happened? As the, suppose there is no, no load, forget this part. The 50 percent load is there on the motor. In that case, what is happening? For a, when we increasing the excitation current, field current is gradually decreasing. You see here, starter current is gradually decreasing when the excitation is down for 50 percent of this amount of starter current drawing from the field the moment of increasing the excitation automatically starter current or the current drawn from the line is gradually reducing so when it is passing to the x-axis here is a no uh, starter current it is not taking any current only it is taking excitation at the zero one but it is a 50 percent load this amount of excitation current is, uh, sorry starter current is drawing from the line so this portion when it is working low excitation current is running, it is running as a lagging power factor. The moment you cross this minimum point, then you see again, now if you increase the excitation current, up to this time, for this period, as you increase the excitation current, the load current was reducing or starter current was reducing. 
Now after this point, now you increase the further ex excitation current. You see the stator current is increasing gradually. So this part, that means here you see this amount of excitation corresponding current is this stator current. Now we increase the excitation further here. This amount of this amount of excitation you are giving, you are getting uh, motor is taking more current from the line. So this current is actually leading current. So this is acting as a leading power factor. That is a is a positive power factor. As a, it, that means in this region the induction motor working as a capacitor that's why it is called synchronous condenser so if we run this motor in this way we can improve the power factor advantage of this synchronous motor using the operation is very smooth in case of capacitor drum we have seen that multiple capacitor if we have to use it if we want to find control and for the different various power factor so in that case the operation is not smooth one to other will be a step by step but here the operation is smooth but investment will be more so that's why this option is suitable only when there is a requirement of KBR is more than your 500 KBR. In that case, synchronous condenser using is better option. Is operation is very smooth, control is fine, though the investment is more. Okay. And the last option is fade advancer. We have said already is very old uh, option, old uh, motor we are using, we used to use, but this is only possible to use for an individual motor, not this total system. Suppose a plant has 150 motors, we cannot use the phase advancer. Phase advancer are only used for a dedicated motor. But again, the motor must be, it is induction motor, but it is a free induction motor by the rotor supply can be provided for external. Okay. So in that case, the, the motor, which is double, this is a motor shaft. This is a rotor of the motor and this is a starter. And the, on the motor shaft, there is a celebrity. This is the celebrity on the rotor. Okay, if this is the arrangement, then this type of motor power factor we can improve by giving excitation from the outside. How it is work? Now this motor is connected with a three phase line. Suppose this is a line. This is a three phase line. It is red, yellow, and blue. This is a three phase line. Motor is this is a rotor, and this is your starter. Okay. This is a starter enclosure, and this is a winding over here. Okay. This is a winding, and this is an enclosure. So this is this part is rotating part and this is a stationary part and this cylindering on the rotating part. So this room, this is induction motor. Now what is happening when you give the power supply over here, not the rotor. We are giving power supply to the starter, okay? Not on the rotor. Rotor is connected, but the power supply is given. This is a rotor. This is a rotor arm, okay? This is rotor arm, but the power supply is given to the starter winding. This outside winding. When you give the power supply to the starter winding, immediately. A starter winding will be create a three phase rotating magnetic field uh, in the air gap. There is a air gap between these two. Yeah? In this air gap, there is a rotating magnetic field. This rotating magnetic field will be linked with this rotor bar or the rotor casing. And when it is linked with the rotor casing, then there will be, you know, the variation of uh, magnetic force will cause electromotive force. So there will be electromotive force will be generated in the rotor winding. And that rotor winding, will go, it, what will happen? It will try to the current is flowing through the rotor winding so this rotor this current will create another electromotive force or the magnetomotive force in turns which will react with the original three phase rotating magnetic field and they will by mutual action of this they will produce a torque which will rotate the motor okay now when this rotating magnetic field linked with the rotor in the rotor there will be voltage induced or electromotive force induced the frequency of those induced voltage will be the slip frequency because you know the motor when the motor, induction motor runs it never runs on synchronous speed we know synchronous speed, n is equal to 120 f by p this is the synchronous speed now if this is speed is equal suppose two pole machine this is a 3000 rpm for 50 years but it never ran on maybe it is running on 2900 so how much slip is there slip is 100 so 100 slip will give some slip frequency how much the slip frequency so n is equal to 100 suppose slip frequency of speed 100 this is called 120 f by p. So the f equal to 100 into p by 120. That will be the slip frequency. The slip frequency will be very less than the original 50 hertz frequency. That frequency current will be generated in the rotor, which will cause the rotor to rotate. Okay. Now this reactive current actually drawn from the line due to the drawing of the reactive current for this rotor, the power factor of the motor is poor. Now, if we can inject this rotor current externally from outside, then the rotor current, this reactive current required for this uh, rotor, it will not be drawn from the line, automatically line power factor will increase. 
So to improve the power factor by the phase advancer, what we have to do? We have to inject the, this rotor frequency current to the rotor from outside. How we do that? We, with this cylindering, then this rotor, we put a coupler over here. That is for gear, for speed change. If we want to use the same rotor for the uh, other uh, uh, supplier. So how we give this supply? We supply this called exciter. We use a three-phase exciter. That three-phase exciter will give the exciting current to this brush, to this cylindering. How we we'll connect this? So there will be one exciter here. This is called exciter. This exciter will produce a three-phase supply. That three-phase supply through the brush connection, there will be actually a DC type arrangement. So there will be three brush. And this three brush is connected to this cylindering. And this exciter will produce the AC current. And that AC current will come to this uh, cylindering. And that will go to the rotor. And it will produce the rotating man uh, slip frequency magnetic force in the rotor and then this additional this reactive force will not come from here automatically motor power factor will improve actually this exciter actually different type it could be a uh, either a supply from a permanent magnet with the armature with this uh, slivering array with this brush arrangement commutator will be on the top and over the commutator suppose this is a commutator we, you know the dc motor this is a commutator and there is a winding over inside which is getting power supply this commutator, we can put a three brush at 120 degree angle. This is a very old technique, 120 degree angle, we can put three brush. These are the brush and this is coming and it will put in, when it is rotating with a common shaft, with a gearing arrangement, because it needs to run at a lower speed. We say it is 100 RPM speed only to be run. So the speed will be less. So this is running on 3000 RPM. So we need a reducing gear over here. It will be coupled with the reducing gear. With the reducing gear, the exciter will be rotating with the same shaft. And then it will produce the electromotive force, three force through the brush arrangement, and that will be connected to the motor cylindering. And then the motor induction motor uh, power factor will be improved. So this is the another arrangement to improve the power factor. But it is a very complicated and old technique. So nowadays, for most of the LV and medium voltage, we use the capacitor one with the processor and with the zero crossing thyristor arrangement, more sophisticated one. And if we use not, we do not want to spend more money and low speed, we can go by the contactor arrangement. So, and otherwise we go for the big, where the big plant is there, we need a power factor control, we use a synchronous condenser. So, this is the various methods for improving a power factor. I will limit discussion over here, only just highlight another small, small aspect. This capacitor bank has a problem, it has a switching charge. When you switch on the capacitor bank, we have seen, this is how it is connected. So, it is a connected over here. This is the capacitor bank is connected here. And this is connected over here, right? This is the capacitor bank connected. Now, when you switch on this, then immediately there will be switching charge. To limit this switching charge, we put an inductor over here in line with series with the capacitor. And that inductor has a dumping resistance, is connected in this way. So, this will limit the DI DT. The switching charge DI of DT of the capacitor will limit the DI DT. So, if we are very much cautious about the to limit the uh, this uh, DI DT or the switching tangent current. Due to the, because the switching current, when the high switching current, there will be DIDT voltage will be developed that can rupture the capacitor. In that case, we use this damping arrangement. It is called the DIDT protection or the switching tangent protection by using inductor and resistance in parallel and connected in series with the is capacitor. So, this is another requirement for the to avoid for the switching charges or switching tangent. Okay. So this is all about this, uh, but we have to consider one thing, when we are using this capacitor, inductor in parallel series with the capacitor, we have to check the resonance frequency, it should not operate on the resonance frequency, we know how to calculate the resonance frequency, this must be, if there is in harmonics, we have to check that if the resonance frequency created by this should not coincide with any of the harmonics, that is also during application we have to check this, okay. So it will prevent the DIDT, but at the same time, it should not cause the resonance with the capacitor, that also we need to check. So this is all about this uh, power factor improvement arrangement and about the power factor in brief. But if anybody wants to know more about, uh, more critically to want to analyze this thing, please send me email. I will try to cover that part. So that's all about, as it, as it is a very basic uh, parameters and basic parameters of a power system, I would once again request to all of you to look into this, share this thing with your colleagues, friends, your brothers, sisters, or even the students who are in the, if your brother, sister, relative is studying in the college, uh, either diploma engineering or graduate engineering or even they are studying BSc, you can share these uh, videos with them 
so that they can have some preliminary idea about the power factor, how to improve it, what is the impact of the power factor in our daily life. And I will be pleasure if you have any queries, please send me email. I will try to respond. Thank you very much indeed.